All right, video number two today. It is 10.55 a.m. my time, okay? Turn in your authorized version to, you know, of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Isaiah chapter 3, okay? You know, you look at all this stuff that's going on right now, and here, especially in my country, um, in America, this nation which is crumbling day by day, you know, you got the child Trump, uh, you know, kicking a fit over there, and you got Smoking Joe, who's only going to rule for a little while, and then something's going to happen, and then they're going to set up um, Kamala Harris to be the president of this country, Jesuit America. But um, I want us to go through Isaiah chapter 3. Okay? And, you know, right away, before we get to Isaiah chapter 3, we're going to we're going to look at that chapter in its entirety. Can you handle that? Um, let us be reminded of Romans chapter 15. Go to Romans chapter 15. Right now, right now, brethren, I say this to you often, instruction in righteousness for us, the church of the living God, is so important. Especially when they're going to release, finally, the COVID <laughs> vaccine which I personally believe, as well as my wife, that they have had it from the very beginning. And I've noticed that they've attributed this COVID-1984 to it. Have you seen that? Uh, that's interesting because the book 1984 by George Orwell, you know, in that book, if you've ever read it, uh, you should. It's very interesting how that guy came about with all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the Lord didn't give him that of course of course I'm not saying that the little G God of this world perhaps but in that book that talks about victory gin that the people uh, that are in that book 1984 drink daily and it makes her you know makes them more pliable okay don't miss that where they're attributing to this COVID-1984, uh, that they're attributing that to that for this vaccine that they're finally going to release. And also that trying to get a job, okay, guess what? It's going to come to pass that once they release that vaccine, if you don't get that vaccine, you're not going to have a job. No matter what your profession is, whether you're flipping a burger, designing computers, cutting grass, building buildings, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to take that vaccine in order to remain employed. And when you look into the, uh, the vaccine, which you can find on the Catholic Disease Creators website, and you look at all those ingredients... Okay, what you do, by the way, is you find those big words, copy, paste it in your Google search, and go from there and look into what is in that thing. <clears throat> you look, you look, look at me. Okay, you're of the Church of the Living God. You better not take that vaccine because you're going to be sinning against the Lord because you are the temple of the Lord. God our Father dwells within you, Church of the Living God. You take that vaccine, you're in trouble with the Lord. Okay? You're in big trouble with the Lord. Today, you're eternally secure. You're not going to lose your salvation. But him who defileth the temple of God, him will God destroy. But let's be reminded right now, Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. 
For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What are the scriptures? The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. What is our hope? The blessed hope. You understand? Now, Isaiah chapter 3, <clears throat> verses 1 under verse 3 to start. Now, we have to remember, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is written for the Jews. But what did we just read in Romans 15, verse 4? Let's, let's learn a little something. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 3 to start. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Very quickly, look at verse, um, look right there where it says, the Lord, capital L, uh, lowercase o-r-d, and then it says, the Lord, all capital, one God. And it says here, uh, for behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. A food shortage is going to be coming here to my nation, America, very soon. You watch. You watch. You watch. Let's continue. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. Okay? That could get your, uh, your uh, you know, your ribbon marker. Go to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Oh, Ariel. Ariel. <laughs> Where do you, why do we say that? What's the very first verse in Isaiah chapter 29? Uh, Isaiah chapter 29 verses 13 on to verse 16. Wherefore the Lord said, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, <clears throat> and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts by the precept of men. Roman Catholicism. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are done in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? And shall the, th the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? They're not going to get away with this, brethren. We're going to go through some really hard times. We are. But they ain't getting away with it. They ain't getting away with it. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 21. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? 
Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Look at all these doctors and all these Jesuits, okay? Giving you big fancy schmancy sounding words, impressing you with their doctorates and their degrees and their knowledge of all this junk. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be brought to nothing. It's going to be brought to nothing. And now verses 27 on to verse 29 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised which hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You look at our beloved brother Aaron Deering Judge, a preacher of righteousness. Physically, that sweet, dear, dear young brother, physically, is weak. But see, you heretics hate him because, see, the Lord has appointed him to cut you with the sword, the spirit, which is the word of God. And oh, you guys hate that, don't you? Praise the Lord that he has raised up brethren like our beloved brother Aaron Deering Judge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord he has raised up many of you to speak the truth of his word in whatever capacity you are in, especially right now. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord, remember? Go back to Isaiah chapter 3, ver look at verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Children. Okay, now 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And go now to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles. <coughs> And thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. You look at Trump. He's a kid. He's what, in his 70s? Right? But look at how he's behaving. He's behaving like a child. Look at how Smoking Joe behaved during all that nonsense of the selections. Like a child. And these are grown men. These are grown men. They think they know something. They're children. They're only aged in body, but not in experience, not in hope. Because what do they want? They want the money. These, the Trump and uh, Smoking Joe, these guys don't want, they, they want nothing better for you but to line their own pocketbooks and to bring glory to their church, the Vatican, and their little G-God, Satan. That's all they're after. That's all they're after. And you look at my nation, America, 
You look at my nation in America, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Verse 5, And the people shall be oppressed every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is specifically talking about the time of Jacob's trouble and what leads up onto it, right? So, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 12. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his, and his disciples came to him, for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, which were all Jews, <clears throat> came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, the Jews, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, second coming, okay, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Christ means anointed one, okay? If Think about it like this, okay? If someone were going around out there right now today saying, Hi, I'm Jesus Christ, uh, they'd, they'd be locked up in a funny farm, okay? <laughs> that, that Vissarian nut in Russia, whatever his name was, was, yeah. And that doe guy who, that heavens get, whatever, you, you get the point. But it says, For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Christ, anointed one. There are those out there who say they have an anointed ministry. The anointing is on me. Mostly from the Catholic, Catholic, Pentecatholic persuasion. Saying that I'm anointed. Other Christs. Or I am Christ. The anointed one. The Jehos. The morons. The Catholics. Need I continue? And ye shall hear of wars... And rumors of wars. Hello! Is that not happening right now? Right now. The year of our Lord 2020. November 29th. Is that not happening right now at this very second at 11.13 a.m. my time? See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, which is coming, and pestilences, pestilences because of famine, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. Look at that. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. I'll tell you what. My wife and I have been very active, very busy, out there tracking like nuts. Okay? We've been doing a lot of stuff for the Lord. But more so of late. More so of late, divers are hardening. Right here. Then shall, uh, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Look at Isaiah chapter 3 verse 5 again. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. 
Let's continue in Matthew chapter 24. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because of iniquity shall be and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And then verse 13 ties in for what dispensation our Lord Jesus Christ is talking about. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But also now, go to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Tomorrow's proverb. Did you read the 29th proverb today? Huh? Well, you're too busy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. Proverbs 30, verse 11, on to... What did I write down there? Uh, verse 16, okay? Okay. Oh, no, actually, well, let's read to verse 17. Verses 11 on to verse 17 in Proverbs chapter 30. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet has not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters crying, Give, give! There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not it is enough, the eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Have not a lot of the youth risen up against their parents today? Is not youth king? Hmm? People don't want to hear the advice and the counsel of those who are aged. Huh? And especially right now, people want to trust in the doctors and in these Jesuits on the media, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Look at verse 6 on to verse 7 now. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not the make me not a ruler of the people. Isaiah twenty nine again, verses nine on to verse twelve. Isaiah chapter twenty nine, verses nine on to verse twelve. See how we did that? Say, stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. And also with that, okay, go now back to verses 8 and 9 in Isaiah chapter 3. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not, woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil 
unto themselves. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. You, you, you look at them. Look at them out there, brethren. Especially in my country. They boast in it. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 17. This is our instruction in righteousness, brethren. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Beth Hakarim, for evil appeareth out of the north and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise and let us go by night and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees, and cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. Now obviously, whoop, it's talking about Israel, Jerusalem, right? Little instruction in righteousness. A nation that is against God is condemned of itself. Is damned of itself. Okay? And all the people therein as well. Let's continue. As a fountain casteth out her waters, so she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee. God has a soul. <laughs> Lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine, turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. And they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord unto them is a reproach. They have no delight in it. If any of you have been outside your door, witnessing, tracting, tracting speaking unto the lost, preaching through the scriptures, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. But, that, but yet give them a, a nutty idiot's version, right? Oh, they want that because that's not the scriptures, see. Hold on one second, brethren. Continuing on. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. Talking about wrath, God's wrath during the time of Jacob's trouble. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, saying, slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Remember, right now, we need peace and safety, but there is no peace. Your only peace that you could ever have is getting saved. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, 
and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. And also Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 4 on to verse 12. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They return, they refuse to return. Now backsliding does not, the word backsliding does not appear in the New Testament. Okay. Doctrinally, dispensationally, specifically, obviously, onto the Jewish people. But let's continue reading for our instruction in righteousness. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turneth to his course, as the horse rusheth into the battle. Are people ashamed of the evil that they do today? What have I done? And come to the Lord broken and contrite? No. Right now, people are reveling in it. We know this. We know this. Let's continue. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? The wisdom of this world. This wisdom doesn't come from God, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Let's continue. Therefore, Will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them? For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Okay? Now go back to Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 11. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Okay, go to Romans chapter 2. Read this in a previous video that I had done earlier today, but it's, it's so pertinent with, uh, with this. Romans chapter 2 verses 5 on to verse 11. But after thy hardness and impentient heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Uh, Romans 2 verses, uh, what are we reading? 5 unto verse 11. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. 
And right now in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, barbarian nor Scythian, eternally. Culturally, that's a different story. Eternally. Eternally. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. See? And now, okay, now go to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 21 on verse 24. Reading verses 10 and 11 again. Say to the righteous that it shall be well, in uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 3, verses 10 and 11 again. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Verse 11. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 24. What did you just do, Brad? <laughs> Beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 5, verses 21 under verse 24. Or, excuse me, verses 20. 20 under verse 24. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go down, shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Now go back to Isaiah chapter 3, look at verse 12. As for my people... Doctrinally, dispensationally, specifically unto the Jewish people. Our instruction in righteousness, however, as for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Oh, beg your pardon. Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11. Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Okay? Zechariah chapter 11. Come on. Verses 15 on to verse 17 in Zechariah chapter 11. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Okay, this right here from verses 15 under verse 17, you can directly tie onto the son of perdition, the beast. Okay? And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear with their claws. Hello, Jesuits. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his right arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. His right eye shall be utterly darkened. Perhaps the wound that the beast will receive by a sword and live? You know? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. 
Okay, now go to Romans chapter 1. Now, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 28. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 28. You're going to see something here. Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. And the setting up of a foolish shepherd, referencing to the son of perdition, the beast. Okay? Beg your pardon, brother. Okay? Check this out. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 28. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the under uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. You reject the truth? And want, lies, sin? Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Let's continue. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Worshipping flesh, man, the things of this world, okay? The creation, not the creator. For this cause, God gave them up because they have chosen that which the Lord hates unto vile affections. For, their, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Now, that is referring to, again, female sodomites, and I speak about this in the previous video. But right here, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Feminism. Okay? Feminism. Think about it. God's standard is God, man, woman, child. Feminism. God, woman, child, pet, man. Okay? That's what feminism is. Women rule over you. Oh, you watch. You watch, brethren, sisters. You watch. We're going to have here in America our very first female president very soon. You watch. You watch. Let's continue. <clears throat> and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you ask for. God just might give it to you. You don't want to abide by the standards of the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, you want to jump over uh, brokenness and contrition, true scriptural repentance unto salvation? Hmm? Careful what you wish for. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Of course we had to come here. Of course. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10, under verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And 
Now, go to Isaiah chapter 3 again. Okay, Isaiah chapter 3 again. I, I did a two-part video on the woman of God. Okay, I did not bash feminism hard, as hard as I should have in that video, but according to scripture, and this is not me being uh, against women at all, and the Lord is not against women at all. But God's standard, God, man, woman, child, feminism, man, woman, child, pet, man. Okay? America is reaping what she has sown. And in judgment against this nation, you watch is when Kamala Harris will be declared president of the United States. You watch. Now, John, uh, Isaiah chapter th uh, 3, verses 13, under verse 15 now. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people. And the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord of hosts? Now very quickly, look at verse 13. The Lord standeth up to plead, plead, produce evidence against you. You look up plead in the Webster's 1828 dictionary sometime, but look at this. It defines itself what this plead is. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge his people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, people who should know better, and the princes thereof, those who are ruling the people. And for that, brethren, very quickly, let's keep this in mind. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 4. Come on. Verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Something to think about. But now, okay, go to Isaiah Chapter 5, once again, and read verses 13 on to verse 16. 13 on to verse 16 in Isaiah chapter 5. Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and there are honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it, and the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. And now go to Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Lord uh, tied this in uh, this uh, for me this morning on this one. And it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. But let's refresh our memories. Okay. 
Isaiah chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten upon the vineyard. Ye have eaten up the vineyard, excuse me. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God? Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 on to verse 19. Remember, doctrinally, dispensationally, for the Jewish people specifically, our instruction on righteousness, which you and I need quite a bit right now. Let's, let's go. Isaiah chapter 34, verses 1 on to verse 19. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks? Look at our, po our politicians here in America. They're not looking to feed the people here in this country. They're looking to feed themselves. Same with these twits in these church buildings. Okay? Let's continue. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And we haven't seen the force and cruelty yet here in America, but that's quickly coming. I believe at the turn of the year, as soon as uh, Smoking Joe is ordained by the Jesuits, the ruler of America. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after him, after them. Excuse me. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock, and fed not my flock, excuse me. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them anymore. And you can tie this in directly to John chapter 10. Okay, we're not going to go there. But you can you can cross-reference verses 9 onto verse 16, definitely into John chapter 10. Okay, you do that on your own time. Let's continue. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. When God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, was walking amongst us on the earth. His first coming. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. So will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Okay? Is that not what our Lord Jesus Christ did? Who was sent unto the lost sheep of Israel? Hello? Let's continue. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. 
I will feed them in good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall, there shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Future fulfillment after the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, the millennial kingdom, which leads into eternity. Verse 15, I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will, my flock, I will. Future fulfillment coming up. After the time of Jacob's trouble, when our Lord Jesus Christ come down again, the second time with us, his church, okay? I will seek them, I will seek that which was lost. And bring again that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between rams, between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Oh boy, oh boy, huh? Now go back to Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16 on to verse 17. Moreover, the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Now pay attention. Okay, check this out. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and the calls and the round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen, and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Now, from verse 18 on to verse 24 here, what do you notice about these things that are being described? Look, look at it. Look at it. Okay? Look at verse uh, uh, 16. Walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Okay. Verse 18. Okay, look at this. Tinkling ornaments, calls, round tires. Verse 19, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the leg and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels. What are those things? Those are, are, those are adornments of the flesh, are they not? It's all about the flesh. What he is describing here from verses 16 on to verse 24, all has to do with the outer appearance, the flesh, does it not? And because of that, verses 25 and verse, and verse 26, 
Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. I covered uh, quite a few of these verses in the previous video, which I have yet to upload, but th these just, they just go together, okay? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. The things that we just looked at in Isaiah chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 24 specifically, all have to do with flesh. Outward adornments. Okay, go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Come on, fingers work with me. John chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 21. If the world hates you, Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. And also, of course, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 2. You ought to know this by heart. Romans chapter, chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 2. 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let it be the hidden man of the heart, not the adorning of the outwardness of the flesh, you get it? And and look at and look at the people. Under all this, they're still glorying after the flesh. They're still lusting after the flesh. They want that little bit of normalcy of what was before all this nonsense was brought about. And guess what? They ain't no going back. When you got arterial or what's his name? Artillier sclerosis, or excuse me, Arturo Souza, the Black Pope. <laughs> okay, Brother Brian made that comment about him, which I thought was so choice. But Sosa, the Black Pope, when you have him saying that we ain't going back to what was normal before they produced the COVID 19 propaganda pandemic, hmm? when you have that guy saying stuff like that, you know. So, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. And you got to remember, go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Now, the book of James is specifically also written on to the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Hebrews and James are time of Jacob's trouble epistles, specifically. Okay. Oh, if you, yeah, there there are doctrines that do coincide, and there's a lot of instruction and in righteousness for us today. But specifically and doctrinally, these two books, Hebrews and James, are written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. But you noticed how in um, 
Isaiah chapter 3, again, verses 16 on to verse 24, all that adornment about the flesh, making themselves look good on the outside. James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have ye have heaped together at ah, ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Proof right there that gold and silver isn't going to mean much during the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's continue. Behold the hire of the year of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. All you politicians, all of you of the world, ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren. Oh! Oh! Oh, boy! Oh, boy! Oh, boy! I, I, I was reading the wrong thing to you. Okay? Let's... Okay? Uh, ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Okay? Now, <laughs> I was supposed to read uh, James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. And instead I read uh, James 5, verses 1 on to verse 6. <laughs> but, it, but it works. Okay? Forgive me for that. James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. I'm sorry for that, brethren. But it plays. plays in part with this. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoso therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And then again, looking at verses, um, what was it, 18 on to verse 24, excuse me, in Isaiah chapter 3, again, all that is outward adornment of the flesh. Okay, let's continue. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, now resisting the devil right here is hinged on one thing. What is that? Submit yourself, yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Good luck trying to resist the devil in your own flesh apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. Okay? Good luck. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. First, resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you're not submitted unto God, how are you going to resist the devil? Oh, you might be able to resist him for a time, right? But he always wins in the end if you're not of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Let's continue. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You can't have it both ways can't have it both ways. You're either on the Lord's side or you're not. Which one is it? Again, there ain't no option C. 
Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heav heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. And why is he saying for you to mourn and weep? Because of your affections toward the world. Which we read presumptuously in uh, James 5 verses 1 on to verse 6. And again, when you look in Isaiah chapter, uh, excuse me, 16 on to verse 26, that whole thing there. It's all adornment of the flesh. It's all adornment of the flesh. And right now, brethren, right now, what's going on? We need to continue to stand strong, brethren, sisters, in this last time. And be not afraid. And to continue to stand strong in the Lord and for his word. Because there's no going back. The only peace you're going to ever have is in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Your first mouth isn't going to do it. This toxic vaccine is not going to do it. A president is not going to do it. King of kings, Lord of lords, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is your only hope. Without him you have no hope. Comprende? That's going to be it for this video. I was going to read Jeremiah chapter 34 for you, but I think you think you got the gist of it. Go ahead and read Jeremiah chapter 34 on your own time about those who have impending doom coming upon them and still want to cling to the things, the remnant of what they had before judgment was coming. See, and that's the thing, brethren. People want to go back to normal, <laughs> so-called. And they ain't going back to that. That's why you see so much glorification of the flesh in these days. Because people want to cling to that what was. And here judgment is coming. Your only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that spirit. Take heed to these things. And brethren, Church of the Living God, stay strong. Keep them ears open. Okay? Anyway, like I said, that's going to be it for this uh, video. Now I'm going to upload these videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Thank you very much, brethren. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oops. Stop.